from giving walking tours in downtown Charleston to hosting his own weekday morning show on 105.5 The Bridge, Evans Birds does it all and knows it all. I sit down one-on-one -on -one with him for a special edition of Quintez Close-Ups. And be sure to download the free Quintez Close-Ups app in your Apple or Google Play stores. And listen to this interview Tuesday on the free Quintez Close-Ups iHeartRadio podcast. Evans Bird. Quint. It is so good to see you, man. It's always good to see you. I appreciate this greatly. Yeah, man. So obviously you are the, the host of the Live and Local Mornings with Evans here right. at 105.5 The Bridge. Right. And I know that you've been in radio for 32 years. What got you from being a radio legend 32 years ago to right now to now saying, hey, I'm going to be a host for 105.5 The Bridge? <laughs> well, I wouldn't consider myself any kind of legend. I, I tell you, when I was a kid... WTMA was a top 40 station here, right. and they had a, a disc jockey on there named Booby Nash, yes. and I wanted to be a disc jockey like Booby Nash, and in 1986 or 87, I was hired at Q107 here, which was a top 40 station, and just worked my way up through the ranks there until I got on the air and, and just started moving around the country. And you talk about moving around the country. What got you from Charleston to these other markets in your mind? Well, um, I just applied to other markets, but I went from Charleston, which at the time was the 87th market in the country, to number 49, which was Greensboro, then to Charlotte, which was, I don't remember what size, but it was a much bigger market than Greensboro. And, um, and just kept working my way up. And then I decided it was time to come home after being in Alabama. It was time to come home. And you talk about being home. Obviously, you're a seventh-generation Charlestonian. Yeah. When you look at Charleston today to when that happened, that particular history, what goes to your mind? Um, what, do you, what do you mean, what happened with the... So you are a seventh-generation seven Charlestonian. Right. When you look at Charleston today, what goes to your mind? Well, we're a city that has an extremely rich history, um, and that is one thing I love about this city. Um, I, I did a survey the other day asking me, if you could share one thing with someone else, what would it be? And I said, my vision, my eyes, so that you can see things the way I see things. When I see this city, I see all of the history, I see all of the beauty, I see all of the people. And, and what makes this city such a great place to live and a great place to work because, and, and it's, it's not just, you know, revolutionary history, it's black history, it's women's history, it's everything. And I include all of that in my tours, um, which, which I do tours downtown, but um, that to me is what really makes this city. I mean, our culture, everything. I mean, we have very rich culture here. And, and obviously, you do a lot of features here at 105.5 The Bridge, <laughs> including today in Charleston history. Yeah, I'm getting ready to start putting together to, uh, this week in Charleston history in just a few minutes. What is today in history in your mind? Uh, well, I, today, I don't know. Well, I look at what happened on this date back in and whenever. Um, and I, I use a website, Mark Jones, <laughs> <laughs> who is also yeah. a tour guide. Right. And uh, Mark uh, has published uh, every day of the year what happened in Charleston right. history. So I do give him credit uh, to, for people to check out his website and his books. And, um, and I use that. And then I work off of that. I don't yeah. do it verbatim or right, anything right, right. like that. But um, there's things that I add, things that I take away. Take but away. yeah, because it's pretty interesting. I mean, it might be something as little as a, a birth of somebody yeah. or a shot fired in the war or, or anything. It could be a number of things. A number of things. What do you take away when you think of this whole notion of people trying to basically be tour guides without having an actual license? Well, that is, to me, that's an, an issue because people are going to be getting tours from people that don't know the history. That's the whole process of the licensing, was to prove to the city that you knew the history, the architects, the dates, the flowers. I mean, there's so much on that, on that test. Right. 
And if you could pass that test, then you're pretty much an expert on Charleston history. If you can't pass the test, then study harder. But, you know, these folks sued and won, and now we can't uh, require a person to be licensed in the city of Charleston to do tours. So it's kind of like... Um, if if I want my air conditioner fixed, I'm going to hire someone who has a mechanical contractor's license. I'm not going to hire some guy because my friend said, oh, well, he knows how to do this. But I want somebody that knows what they're doing. You know, I don't want a fly by night person. And, and I don't I'm not saying that the, the unlicensed guides are fly by night. I think that they are. Uh, they just they need to learn their history. if They're going to talk about it. How credible are you? How credible am I? Yeah, now that this issue has come about. Well, I've been licensed and certified for 22 years. I've taken the test three or four times. Right. Sometimes that's what I'll do to renew is just take the test over again. And I double check and triple check everything. I don't take any, any historical event at face value. There's more to the story. There's two sides to every story. There's multiple stories with slavery. And I've studied slavery in great detail with Nicole, who was the curator at the Slave Market Museum. And I learned things that I had no idea about. Um, the uh, stuff that's omitted from history, Robert Smalls, for instance. Robert Smalls doesn't get talked about in history books or anything like that. And He's one of the greatest people in American history. Um, he's the one that stole the ship, the Confederate planter, and um, became a congressman. Right. He was enslaved from birth. And so um, I hope I haven't gone off, off the deep end on this one. But um, I, I think that people shouldn't just look at the tour guide manual and think that's, you know, the be all end all. There's so much more to the stories, so much more to the stories. And so, and I'm into finding out the whole story. So another good one is John and Lavinia Fisher. Right. right? That ghost story is not true. <laughs> but there is a book called Six Miles to Charleston that is the true story. Um, I mean, they really did exist and they were executed. But the story leading up to the execution is it's all false. And you talk about, obviously, two sides to the story and history. i got to take you to something that you love, horses and carriages. Right. Obviously, there's a big debate between the Charleston Animal Society and the carriage doors over their, you know, obviously, care of the animals. Where are you in this discussion? Well, as a former carriage driver, I support the carriage industry. Um, I know that the horses that are downtown are extremely well cared for. Um I have I've seen horses fall. Um, a lot of times that is from a slip or a trip. It's uh, not from being overworked. The horses are monitored all throughout the day. Um, I know when I worked at Old South, the horses were monitored three times between tours. Their temperatures taken, their water, their fans. But um, the you know. The temperatures taken and all that stuff, the, course, the horses are very, very well cared for. The physics behind the carriage. The horse is not pulling the weight of 17 people in a carriage. The, um, if you look at the carriage wheels, that's one of the biggest elements is the width of the tire on the carriage. You're talking of a tire that's two inches wide. Um, that does not put a lot of friction on the street. If a horse was pulling it with the car tires on it, he'd be pulling a little more. It would require a little more force. But um, in races like the Tour de France, right. where they race those road bikes, um, their tires are an inch wide. And if you were to ride one of those bikes next to somebody on a mountain bike, the person on the mountain bike is going to be pedaling a lot more than you because you have less friction on the road. So it takes about 250 pounds of force to pull that that carriage forward. Okay. And when you have an animal that weighs 2,000 pounds, they're just walking. Um, but they are, and they're loved. I mean, we, I love the horses downtown, like Gumbo and Vern. And, and you know, I know, you know, most of the horses down there. Right. And, um, and people, they love them. I mean, you're not going to put something in danger that you love. 
But I think a lot of the protests going on from the people in the downtown area is because they've moved here and they don't want them on their street. And, you know, I mean, there's people that protest walking tours, you know, everything. But, hey, you should have known when you moved here. That's my opinion. And obviously you traveled around the country. When you hear about this debate between the Charleston Animal Society and the, whore, and the carriage companies, where does your mind go to there? Well, my mind goes in support of, of the carriage industry. I, I It's a great industry. Uh, you know, carriages, if, if we didn't have automobiles today, we'd still be using horses. Um, and these horses are specifically bred and created for that purpose. Usually when somebody says that they want to talk to me about it or debate me over it, or I had a, a woman tell me that she doesn't support me. She says, I don't support you because you support the horses. And I'm like, well, that's fine. But before we have a discussion, you tell me what breed those horses are. And she said, I don't know. I guess they're all Clydesdales. There's not a single Clydesdale in Charleston. So, you know, learn the facts and then, then we'll talk about it. I'm not going to debate somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about. So most of the horses are Belgian draft or French Percherons, American spotted draft horses. There's a half a Clydesdale downtown. Sammy. And Sammy, right? right. <laughs> It's got a blue eye and a brown eye. That's right. Hetero heterochromia. It's pretty cool. And I, I, what I wanted to say was that when you travel around the country, what are people telling you about this issue here? Well, when I travel, nobody really gets into it all that much. I mean, the only place I ever go really is occasionally to Ohio. And people up there, they always want to come down here and take a carriage tour. And uh, so I, I haven't heard any opposition to it anywhere that I've gone. Nobody... Um, I guess if you don't really have, you know, uh, a, a vested interest in it somewhere else, it's not going to matter. I know in New York, they, they want to do away with it. And um, I think in New York, there's probably good reasons for it because of horses um, being hit and, um, and uh, obviously all the automobiles. It can't be good for the, what those horses are breathing in. But we, you know, we don't have that kind of traffic here yet. <laughs> I have a feeling it's on the way. And obviously, that's another topic here in Charleston. <laughs> Don't get me started on traffic. I I sit in it two hours a day. So I live in Somerville. It takes me 30 minutes to get here in the morning. It takes me an hour and a half to get home. So, Where do you see traffic headed to in the future? Well, hopefully the city will build another loop. But that, I, I doubt the Tri-County area, they would build another loop in the Tri-County area. But we, you know, is you got 86 people moving here every day. Right. Traffic's just going to get worse and worse and worse. And when I'm on the road at 5 in the morning, right. and there is traffic on the road at 5 in the morning. I mean, it's bumper to bumper. It's moving, but it, it does hit slowdowns and things like that at 5 in the morning. But then you got all those people going to Boeing and going to West Vaco, and so usually on my commute, I drop most of the people I'm traveling with are come off around uh, 526, Six. but 526, we've already outgrown it by a long shot, and it, you know, the traffic on that road is insane, and Clements Ferry Road is right. crazy, so I try to avoid those areas at all cost. And when you talk about 526, is the extension of that project dead or alive in your mind? Well, I think it would be cool if they would finish it um, across Johns Island. Of course, people say keep Johns Island rural, but Johns Island is, I mean, it is a rural area, but it's also growing out there as well. I mean, you have new subdivisions out there, apartment complexes out there, um, and the, you know, they used to grow tomatoes out there. Now the land's worth more money not to grow tomatoes. It's worth more money to build big houses on and things like that. I mean, it is a little slice of heaven out there in some places, but I think it's it's time to, to move forward with that extension and go into downtown Charleston. And let me return you back here to 105.5 The Bridge. Obviously, this particular radio station is alive. When you think back to 1987 to now about radio, what is the state of radio in your mind? Well, radio's changed a lot. When I started, you played records, you had a staff, uh, you had a programming staff, you had a sales staff, you had a promotion staff, production. Right. And uh, now with automation, which 
is up in the background here. Yeah. Um, you don't have to carry as large of a staff, which is a shame. The old days of radio, when it was a lot of fun, is gone. But you you would have to. So I started when we were still playing records, and uh, so and you you had to run the board. Now most of the time there's one pot up on the board and that's it. And you turn the microphone on and off, but I can, with the technology today, I don't have to be living in Atlanta to do a show in Atlanta. Right. I can do that show in 10 minutes from my house and send it in, email it in and things like that. And they can just plug in where it needs to go. So you have people now wearing multiple hats. So I do uh, on air and I do production. Um, and then Jackie, who works across the hall, she's promotions. Right. She takes care of um, all the internet stuff right. and social media. She does middays on 98 Rock. So up here, you, you have a very small amount of people, but this amount of salespeople has remained the same or grown. So, you know, it's, it's like when I worked for one station here, we had eight radio stations, 16 studios. Wow about five or six, well, I would say probably about eight people working in programming and close to 60 salespeople. And uh, so the local aspect of radio is gone. Most of the morning shows are out of market. Um, a, lot of, a lot of regular shows are out of market. And that's one of the things that we pride ourselves on is at six o'clock in the morning, I'm in that studio and you can call my studio and I'll answer the phone. Um, and that's not, not something that is, is the norm anymore. Mm -hmm. Stations aren't live and they aren't local and we are live and we are local. And uh, the critic will be here, you know, a couple of hours and start his shift. Yes. And, yes. Um, and so working here is kind of like, old school radio a little bit because we are live and uh and i like that a lot i like being live yeah. you know i make mistakes but it doesn't matter it goes over the air and uh <laughs> people know i'm not perfect right. and so and i appreciate the people that are listening to me um so um, all three of you uh, <laughs> i heard you doing great in the 25 <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> i am doing really good in women so That's much true. much better than uh than things were but yeah it's come along pretty nicely um thank god yeah i enjoy it man i have a great boss uh, ken carson i worked for him here many years ago when this was cool 105 right. i worked for ken in, in birmingham and uh he's a great program director he's also the operations manager of both stations and music director so he wears a lot of hats too but he is he's one of the best in my opinion and and he's helped me develop my skills over the years and uh, even when i wasn't working for him i would call him for advice nice. and things like that so wow, yeah yeah he's a great guy yes indeed and obviously the title of your show is live and local mornings with evans right bird what is the title of your future? <laughs> Live and retired. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, uh, live with the lottery winner. I don't know. I don't see myself retiring anytime <laughs> soon, but uh, I wish I could. Um, you know, hopefully my kids will <laughs> become celebrities or something and take care of me. I doubt that's going to happen. But uh, yeah, hopefully one day live and retired and just chilling on a beach somewhere. That is so great That's, to hear. Yeah, I'd love, with a fishing rod in one hand right. and a ice cold Corona. <laughs> I can see that happening. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's where I'd like to be, just oh. chilling out. I'd love to be living on a ranch. Right. And in the middle of nowhere. With nowhere. Yeah, I might even give my family the address. Oh. So, to let them know where I'm at once in a while. Once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Evans Bird, thank you so much for your time. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate you coming in. And uh, I always enjoy talking to you on, out on the streets That's and stuff. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I saw you the other day, but I had a group of people. I wasn't going to yell at oh, you. Oh, no, you're fine. <laughs> I tried not to bother you guys when you're giving tours. 
that's that's all right. It's uh, you know Charleston is a small town, and you know the tour guides that have been around a while. We know everybody right, right. in downtown Charleston. Sure. My boss says I should be the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> he has an open election this year. Yeah, well, that's not going to happen. <laughs> I'm uh, I like Mayor Tecklenburg. He's he's a nice guy. Yeah. He's going to help us out with some stuff this year, which is going to be pretty cool. Oh, awesome! And. Uh, We'll, we'll see. I'll let y'all know when it happens. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. It was my pleasure. It. Likewise.